Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is S and I make Vampire minigame tutorials. And before we get into the video, I'd like to thank all of my patrons as usual. And since the last series, there's also three new patrons that have joined by the name of Amephira, Crocodile Games and Hayley B. And I hope that I have pronounced the names correctly. So thank you so much for joining and supporting me and my channel. Thank you so much. In this series, we are going to be creating a Simon Says type of minigame where we're going to have a set of colored buttons that are going to light up in a certain pattern. The goal for the player is to repeat the pattern in the correct order by clicking on the buttons. If the player gets the entire combination correct, then they win, but if they get one button wrong, then they lose and have to try again. The player can also choose between three different difficulties, which also determines the length of the patterns. Now let's have a look at the tutorial outline. So we're going to have four colored buttons that are going to light up one after the other in a randomly picked pattern. And there should be three different difficulties, easy, medium and hard, and they are going to determine the length of the pattern. The next button in the pattern is only revealed once the player has gotten the previous buttons in the same pattern correct. If the player presses one button wrong, it's game over and they have to try again, but if they get the pattern correct, then they win. To follow along with the tutorial series, you're going to need a new vampire project in the size 1280 x 720 pixels using the latest version of the vampire engine. You are also going to need the image assets provided for this tutorial, which you can download from the description box below. It is good if you have at least some basic Python programming knowledge to code along with the tutorial, however, you may still find it useful and educational either way. The finished script will be available for download for Patreons in the tier supporter or higher when the tutorial series has finished. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with the coding. So here I have the script file open in the Atom editor, which is my editor of choice. And I've gone ahead and cleaned up the script a bit so that I'm only left with the start label and you should do the same thing. Once you have done that, you also want to make sure that you have added all of the images into the images folder of your project. And as you can see, we have quite a few images available. And at the top here, we have a folder called UI that contains different UI related images, such as a background image for a menu and some arrow buttons. And then we have the background image right here, together with all of the different colored buttons and their different states. So a good thing to start with is going to be to create the actual screen that is going to contain the background image together with the colored buttons. So for that, we are going to create a few of the lines just above this start label. And then we're going to say screen. And we can call this screen Simon says like so. So the first thing we're going to add instead of this screen is going to be the background image because we want the buttons to be on top of the background. And for that, we're going to say image to create a new image displayable and then we're going to add the path to the image which is going to be background dot png like so now because i've made all of the images twice as large as what we want to have them displayed in the game we're going to resize this to be half of its original size and the reason why i made them larger is just so that if we ever want to go full screen with the game the images aren't going to look too blurry so to resize this to be half of its original size, we're going to create a transform. And for that, we are going to create a few of the lines just above this screen, like so. And then we're going to say transform. And then we're going to name this transform and we're going to call it half size, like so. And then we're going to give this transform a zoom property. So we're going to say zoom. And this is going to be 0 0.5 to make the image half of its size. And then we just need to apply this transform to this image displayable. So we're going to say at half size, like so. Next, we're going to add the colored buttons to the screen. And for that, we're going to use image buttons. So we're going to create a new line and then say image button. And then we're going to use the auto property for these image buttons to make sure that they are going to automatically switch between the idle and the hover state. And then we're going to add the actual image path. So for that, we're going to say red button 
as the first color and then we're going to say dash percent s dot png and the percent s is a placeholder that is going to be replaced with the word hover or idle depending on if we're hovering over the image button or not and then we're going to position this button on the screen and for that we're going to use the align property so we're going to say align and this is going to be at 0 0.15 and 0 0.65 like so now in order for an image button to be able to switch between its idle and hover state it's going to need an action applied to it but because we're not going to add a proper action to the image buttons until later on in the tutorial we're just going to add a null action to begin with which isn't going to do anything specific when we click on the button it just tells Rampy that we don't want anything specific to happen so for that we're going to say action and then null action like so and the last thing we're going to do with the image button is to make sure that we are resizing it to be half of its original size because as you might remember I said earlier on that all of the images in the tutorial are twice as large as what they should be inside of the game so for that we're going to say at half size so now let's go ahead and do the other ones as well so for that I'm going to duplicate this line by pressing ctrl shift d on my keyboard and then I'm just going to rename the path to blue instead like so and then I'm going to reposition this to be at 0 0.35 and 0 0.52 instead like so and then we're going to duplicate this line again by pressing ctrl shift d on the keyboard and then we're going to do the green button so we're going to say green for the file path like so and this one is going to be positioned at 0 0.65 on the x-axis and 0 0.52 we can leave because it's going to be on the same vertical line as the blue button and then we're going to do the last one which is going to be the yellow button so we are going to duplicate this line again and then we're going to say yellow instead of green and we're going to line this to be at 0 0.88 and 0 0.65 like so. So now that we have done that, we are going to go ahead and check if this Simon Says screen is going to show correctly. And for that, we are going to call the screen from the start label. So we're going to say call screen Simon Says. Like so. And then we're going to save our changes and then launch the game to see what this looks like. So here we have the game open and running. And as you can see, we have the background image right here as well as the buttons on top right here and we can also tell that when we hover over a button it will change into its hover state that has a slight white border so we know that that is working correctly now let's go back into the code and continue with some other stuff the next thing we can do is to create a pattern of buttons that the user should follow and to do this we're going to create a python function that we then can run every time we want to create a new pattern and this function is also going to take into account the difficulty that the user has picked. So let's go ahead and do that now. So to create a Python function, we first of all are going to create an init Python block. And we can do that at the very top of the script. So we're going to say init Python, like so. And if you happen to be unfamiliar with what an init Python block is, it basically allows you to add pure Python code into your RemPy script that is going to be run before the game launches. And what that means is that you can create classes and functions, for example, that you can then refer to at different parts of your script. So now let's go ahead and create our function that is going to generate a pattern for the user to follow. So for that, we're going to say def, and then we're going to name this function. And this is going to be create button pattern like so and then inside of these two round brackets we're going to add a parameter that is going to contain a string which represents the difficulty that the user has picked and this parameter we're going to call type like so and the first thing we're going to add to this function is going to be a variable that is going to contain a list of all of the buttons that makes up the pattern and this variable we can conveniently call pattern like so 
and we're going to set this to an empty list to start with and then we're going to fill it throughout this function. And on the next line, we're going to check what the type parameters value is set to. And this can be either easy, medium and hard, which are the different difficulties that the user can pick from. So first of all, let's check if the type parameter has the value easy. So we're going to say if type is equal to easy, like so. And if this if statement is true, then we're going to go ahead and generate a pattern of buttons that corresponds to an easy difficulty. In this pattern, we're going to put inside of our pattern list. And to do that, we're going to create a for loop that is going to run a certain amount of times and create a random button each time to fill the pattern list with. And I have chosen that an easy difficulty should generate a pattern of four buttons. So for that, we're going to create a for loop that is going to run four times. So we're going to say for i in range and then we're going to put four inside of there to create a loop that is going to run four times and this i variable right here is going to contain a number that represents how many times the loop has run so the first time the loop runs is going to be zero and then the next time it's going to be one and then two and so on until it reaches three because if you count from zero to three you get four so now instead of this for loop we're going to say pattern dot append and this means that we're going to append a new item to the pattern list and instead of this append method we are going to generate a random number that is going to correspond to a colored button and to do that we're going to use a function inside of empy called randint and to access it we're going to say rempy dot random dot rand int like so and instead of these two round brackets of the rand int function we're going to supply two values which the rand int function is going to generate a random value between and for that we're going to say zero and then comma and then three like so so now the rand int function is going to generate a number between zero and three and then put it inside of the pattern list and this is going to happen four times according to this for loop right here which means that we are going to get a pattern list with four randomly generated numbers so now that we've done the easy pattern we're going to continue with the medium pattern so we're going to duplicate this whole section by selecting it first and then pressing ctrl shift d and then we're going to say medium instead of easy for the type check so we're going to say medium and for the full loop, we're going to change the 4 to say 6 instead to make it a little bit longer. And then we're going to leave the rest to be the same. And then we'll duplicate this section again, like so. And now we're going to check if the type is instead hard. And in this case, we're going to make the loop loop 8 times instead, like so. Now the last thing we're going to do with this function is to make sure that it will return the pattern list so that we can use it throughout the rest of the script. And for that, we're going to use a return statement. So we're going to create a few of the lines under here, like so, and then go inwards twice. So one, two, like so. And then we're going to say return pattern, like so. So this means that the pattern list is going to be the value that is returned from this function to wherever this function was called from. And as an example, we can go ahead and create a variable that is going to be equal to this function. And we can do that, for example, inside of our start label. So I'm going to create a new line at the very top of this label, like so. And to create a variable, we are going to have to do that in Python code. And to let Rampy know that we want to use Python code, we can either write a Python block that is going to contain some lines of Python, or we can create one line of Python code by using a dollar sign. So I'm going to use the dollar sign option since I'm just going to create one variable. So I'm going to write dollar sign. And then to create this variable, we can call it test variable, for example. And this is going to be set to the function. So we're going to say create button pattern, like so. 
And now since our function that we created expects one parameter that we have called type, we're going to have to pass in a value for that parameter. And since it expects a string value that is going to be easy, medium or hard, we're going to supply one of those values. So let's go with easy, for example. So we're going to write two quotation marks like so, and then say easy. So now this test variable is equal to this function call. And what does that mean? That means that the variable is going to be equal to whatever this function returns. And in this case, it returns the pattern list that we have created inside of this function. So the test variable is going to be equal to the pattern list. And now to test to see what this test variable actually contains, we can go ahead and print it out to the debug log inside of our game. So for that, we can go ahead and create another line of Python code. So let's go ahead and create a dollar sign. And then we're going to say print to use the print function that is available instead of Python. And then we're going to print out the variable. So we're going to say test variable, like so. So now let's go ahead and save our changes and then launch the game. So here, instead of the game, let's go ahead and open up the debug log by pressing shift O on the keyboard. And as we can see here, we have one line printed out right here which tells us that our variable is a list with these two square brackets and then the contents inside of that list, which are four numbers that have been randomly generated. But that is going to be it for this video and we're going to continue in the next part. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.